the internal combustion engine or in this case the infernal combustion engine this having been closer in its inception to when internal combustion engines were invented than either of those computer-controlled Fords back there. With this one you get basically a carburetor, air cleaner, rudimentary electrics, and distributor. The only thing in the way of pollution control is this here, the positive crankcase ventilation system or PCV. Essentially PCV is nothing more than a controlled vacuum leak. Inside here there's a weighted plunger with a spring. Manifold vacuum pulls the plunger off its seat, allowing combustion gases drawn in here through the crankcase and on into the engine. Now, just by virtue of the piston going up and down, or in a Wankel engine, the, the triangle spinning around it, there's blow-by. The combustion gases seep past the piston rings down here into the crankcase, pressurize the crankcase. In the old days, they used to just vent directly on the road. And if you've been to other countries that didn't have pollution controls, or if you're old enough like me to remember, there was always a greasy strip down in the center of all roadways. But what I want to do is take this hose here, come out of the PCV, and put it in through a filter system located somewhere around in here, and then back into the engine. And the reason is this one has a significant amount of blow-by. Uh, not enough for it to be rebuilt yet, but it's getting there. So what I want to do is filter it through this mechanism, have it leave the PCV, in through this port, there, there are veins inside to induce a swirl, the oil vapor trapped into the, in where the combustion gases will spin, hopefully the oil will collect in the bottom, the vapor will go through this brass filter and on into the manifold. Gesundheit. I don't know if you can hear that on a camera, but the coolant system decided to gurgle. Thinking about mounting it somewhere around in here. Not exactly sure what that would entail. That would be a 90 degree turn. I don't know. Possibly here. It's not really in the way there. It's not really level either, but that's close. Definitely not up here. The hood hinges will hit it. There's my ignition system. Aftermarket, of course. And by aftermarket, I mean homemade. That's the uh, the cooling system from an old Apple computer with a Ford ignition coil. And behind it's a, a electronic ignition module from a Trans Am. Anyway, going to... Uh, Mark this, drill some holes, put in some screws, mount this puppy up, and uh, see what I get. Alright, be back in a second. For you it'll be a second. For me it'll probably be tomorrow. Now here's another aspect of the battle of the blow-by. What I've done, I've got one of these uh, central pneumatic mini air filters for an air compressor comes with a little gauge which I'm not going to use but I got this at the China Mart and it has a little cup that screws on the bottom but the cup has a little valve and when the air pressure drops below a certain amount this little valve would open and it would drizzle the water out because it's primarily designed to uh, separate the water I don't know if you can see it in here but there are little veins and they're kind of angled. That's so it creates a vortex and then all the water would settle on the side because when it goes from high pressure to a lower pressure, you know, it's a larger volume, lowers the pressure. The water would drop out of suspension and then the air would go through this little brass cloth and back out this side. We don't really need all that. 
so I've put some epoxy in the bottom of this it's a little unsightly on the side where it didn't mix exactly right the easiest way to do it was to open this up take out this spring here put it back together and then just epoxy it all shut and it's it's watertight oil tight pressure tight but some of it didn't mix exactly properly so what I'm going to do is just tape it up and uh, paint it kind of to match the truck a little bit won't be noticeable then rather than put this pressure gauge on here the engine at the best vacuum has only had 22 22 pounds so a lot of wasted gauge however I can use that for another project hook it on the air compressor to, so I can adjust the pressure as I go for putting in tires or whatever air and tires or whatever instead I'm going to use this guy I'll just wrap it in Teflon tape and screw him right in there so it's starting to take shape a little bit it doesn't come with any fittings but I've got this one I need to get another one the one I bought was too small don't have any restrictions in there and this is just going to go into one of the sides here another one just like it so that the uh, PCV comes out of the valve cover goes in here goes through the vortex separates the oil hopefully and any condensation and only the vapor goes through here goes about this side and then goes into the manifold so that's pretty much it this is to adjust the pressure I've got it adjusted to where it's just wide open so there's no restriction don't really need that it just that's how it came you know, I could conceivably just crank it all the way down and close off the whole PCV system then I've got that blue smoke coming out of that breather again so anyway there's that part. I'm going to get started on it with Teflon tape and paint. So for you, it'll just be a couple of seconds. But for me, it'll be a few hours because I've got other things I need to do too. All right. It looks like the sun's come out to join us after the monsoon last night. Okay. So as you can see down here, I've got the little bracket. Hardly anything earth shattering this. I just put the bracket on where I wanted it. Marked it with a grease pencil, drilled two holes, put two screws in there with some Loctite blue, put nuts on the inside of it. They stick out a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of dark, but I'm going to trim them down a bit later. Maybe, I remember. Two ways you can put this bracket you can put it this way, kind of brings everything up, or the other way, kind of brings everything down. I'm going to try to do this one handed now. This will just fit in here, like so. I don't think it'll stay until I can get this this plastic nut on here. But anyway, that's it. It'll sit here. Kind of butts up against the uh, windshield washer reservoir a little bit, but it doesn't matter. It's got plenty of room. So it'll come out of the PCV, go over here into the inside. This this one with the green on it. Then go back out the out into the manifold. Very simple. I'll turn you back on here whenever it's done and then uh, crank it up, let it run a little bit, take it for a test drive, see if any oil accumulates. Maybe I can give you an example of how much blow by is present when I take off the oil filler cap here. And that's it. Well here she goes. It's done. Crankcase vacuum. The vacuum comes from the manifold here. It's sucking it through. So, so the crankcase gets gases come through the PCV through here. And this little reservoir here, back up, and into the intake. So far I don't see any liquid oil coming through, so that's a good thing. This black you see here is where I just painted it to cover up uh, JB weld a little bit. As you can tell, she doesn't really idle smooth. Uh, it never has. Uh, got a little miss. 
Believe me, it used to miss worse than this. Uh, before I upgraded to this ignition system, it's basically a, it's got a General Motors high energy ignition module mounted behind this overkill heat sink. And there's a forward ignition coil from a Taurus. Goes into a 1970-something Plymouth distributor. And uh, a Holly carburetor modified to hit, uh, hitch up to this uh, two-barrel intake. That, or the carburetor's not modified, the manifold is. This is where the EGR used to be. I just made, used another heat sink off a computer component and drilled it all the way through. Uh, if you're wondering, no, there's not a vacuum leak anywhere. It's pulling 22 inches of mercury at idle. I just, it's always had that miss since I've had it, and I've had this truck over 15 years now. I've uh, gone through four different carburetors. Uh, Three intake manifolds thinking I had a leak and no, they're all sealed up tight. That's just how it is. When it runs, it runs fine. But anyway, I'll do an update to this and then post this whole video after a couple hundred miles to see if there's any uh, oil accumulation. And hopefully that'll take care of some of this drizzle I get, as you can see back here. And if not, well. I knew the day would come eventually when I've got to uh, rebuild the engine or replace it. All right, take care. Okay, for you, it's only been a few seconds. For me, it's been several weeks. Long enough to have surgery, recover from surgery, uh, and rebuild this. Uh, a free lawnmower. I had to take the deck apart because uh, one of the spindles where the pullets, pulleys uh, came through. If you can see it, that spindle came apart, chopped up the mower deck. So, yes, that is the same uh, coppery color that came off the engine. I had some paint left over. Two new tires, complete re rewire job from stem to stern, and uh, some professional blades, gator blades, if you've never tried them. Give them a try. Rebuilt the starter and the carburetor, and it runs great. Anyway, back to the original project here. As you can see, even though it's been several weeks, I've only put 100 miles on this. There's a uh, significant amount of oil in there after only 100 miles. That tells me the rings are either shot or they're carbon so bad that uh, they're just not expanding outward against the cylinder wall. So. Figures lawnmowers and planes as soon as you uh, start recording. I figure the rings are locked in on the piston instead of being out near the cylinder wall and all the blow by is getting past it. I've tried to uh, crank this since it's adjustable to lower the amount of air that comes through. And it did improve the ride quality at the expense of a little bit of goo coming off the... Uh, breather here so I fiddled with it and I think I've got it perfectly tuned to the right place one thing I'm going to try to do is run some uh, I don't know if Marvel mystery oil or I've heard automatic transmission fluid uh, sea foam all these other things trying to uh, knock some of the carbon out when I replaced the head gasket on this a few years ago it didn't really look bad in the cylinders at all as far as uh, like valve recession but even the push rods were covered in just thick carbon and this has been cleaned off and you can still see a little bit in there so I imagine if you can see down there the rest of it's the same way so I'm faced with the thought process here of rebuilding this engine getting another engine to rebuild and then just swapping them out when it's ready going with another engine like Aggie V8 or uh, don't know what to do exactly it runs great once it's warmed up uh, don't have any problem there but anyway 
um, that was the project that little oil capture thing I got less than less than what you'd buy one of those little kits from on eBay Feebay or any of that and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video before my neighbor down here decides to ride his uh, toddler around on the lawnmower again he I guess that's how he gets him to sleep he does it every weekend <laughs>